Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0, that's right guys, and you're back for another Spider Slayer's comic book countdown, that's right, each and every week Mike Spider Slayer counts down from his least favorite book all the way to number one. So with that being said, let's just jump right into the comics this week, uh, we have a total of 13 books all together so a lot of reviewing and let's start it number 13 cyber force issue number four um i wasn't able to buy saber uh, cyber force issues two and three and i bought the first issue and the first issue i felt completely lost right from the get-go for a new series, for people that have not seen in a long time since like the 90s, there was a lot of characters that were introduced and I felt overwhelmed as a reader. Um, the art on the covers have been very tremendous. Um, this art, this cart, uh, excuse me, this cover art was um, just one of the best that the series had to offer so far and this was uh, Aphrodite on the cover um, I guess she's coming out with a new series as well but great great artwork uh, Mark Silvestri is the one who writes this actual book and uh, K.O. Pham is the penciler uh, but my favorite part of the book was is that it's the cover and if it wasn't for free I probably wouldn't get it I did read this issue however and again I felt myself just as lost uh, the only thing that I knew of was that was going on this story was this guy is striker he has a daughter which is her right here this was her wife here he banged her and they had a baby that that, that was about it these guys, these whole bunch of people, the Cyber Force people, are kind of like being chased by a specific group for whatever reason what they did, I wasn't sure. And I guess Aphrodite is, this chick here is the one who I guess is one of, is after them. Uh, that's all I can get. There's lots of dialogue. There really is not that much action. And so with that being said, I can't really give it a fair rating. Uh, but if I was just buying it off the street I wouldn't pay money for it right now but great cover once again number 12 Wolverine and the X-Men the tie-in to the age Voltron issue um, Wolverine and the X-Men it's just been a series that's been for me inconsistent story arcs they throw different stories in there it doesn't feel like there's a constant flow with the comic book and whenever they can they, they just throw in something else and this one has to do with the age of Ultron and this has to do with uh, Sue Storm and Wolverine before age of Ultron book number six and if you're reading age of Ultron this really isn't necessary to pick up uh, so don't waste your money with it um, it wasn't a bad book but you don't need to waste your $3.99 on this book just for a little prelude of what happens in uh, issue number six of Age of Ultron. So I'm gonna give this one a three out of five. Number 11, Vibe, issue number three. Well, Jeff Johns is officially no longer writing the book. He actually co-written it, co it in the previous two issues. Um, and the book was really good. This book, however, is okay. I didn't find it amazing. Uh, it still keeps my interest. Here was your gatefold cover for the week. Uh, it did have to do with Kid Flash. And one of the things we get to learn is that Kid Flash is powerful and Vibe is powerful. And if you touch each other, they can destroy the world. That's what you learn pretty much in this issue. And another key part was this uh, person by the name of Gypsy that's been held captive by Amanda Waller somehow escapes. What does she have to play in this whole thing? It's yet to be determined. 
I'm still waiting to find out what happens with Darkseid's daughter, and that's why I continue to hang on with this. It wasn't bad, just wasn't spectacular. I want to get on, I want to see what happens with that whole Darkseid thing. That thing has got me cliffhanged for a long time, so I'm waiting to see uh, what happens. Uh, but at the end of this issue, we find a mysterious character that I guess time travels, and it's time for Cisco to start. Is it Cisco or Dante? They get them confused, but it's time for him to answer questions. So, again, I'm going to give this one a three out of five. Number ten, top ten, Danger Girl Trinity. All right, so I'm a fan of Danger Girl, and uh, I pretty much collect every miniseries that Danger Girl perts out. Um, I'm a huge J. Scott Campbell fan. I love the cover art because he does the cover art, so whenever I can get a J. Scott Campbell uh, artwork for a very inexpensive price, I pick it up. But I have read Danger Girl from the beginning when J. Scott Campbell actually drew it, and it's a solid series. It has lots of action, uh, espionage, spy type of uh, book, and it's entertaining. And it's nice that this series is in miniseries and not an ongoing. Just for the fact reason is, I don't know if you can make this a continuous series every single week. Uh, or every single month and they throw in different story arcs like the last one was uh, Danger Girl and G.I. Joe the one before that was Army of Darkness and, and Danger Girl and it does these team ups well this was the first one where the Danger Girl uh, company is doing their own thing this time around and in this specific issue uh, you, you get kind of a feel it's an introductory issue if you're not familiar with the team of the characters and you get an intro of Abby Chase and um, Cindy Savage, which is the next girl right here. Um, she's, I guess you got her ass turned to you, but she's right here. Um, so that's Cindy Savage. And then you get the other girl who is uh, the computer nerd, which they didn't really do a good introduction in her. But then you got so Sonia Savage, which is her sister. So they give you a good introduction of the book and basically not much of a story. The only thing you got to learn about is Abby Chase, how she got, has gone missing, capturing this uh, jewel on a boat. And uh, the next issue has to do with the other girls looking for her. And that is, um, I guess that's uh, Cindy Savage there. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this issue was uh, that the artwork, who usually does this book, is done by John Royal, and he does usually the entire artwork all the way through, and it's fantastic. Uh, but in this book, you get another artist, Harvey uh, Talabo and Stephen Molnar, uh, who actually uh, do the rest of the art in the book, and it's not quite up to par, and that's what I was disappointed about. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a decent story. It's a fun read. If you're not looking to dive too into depth of a story, uh, this is something that's visually nice to look at overall. And uh, I give a recommendation for Danger Girl, and I'm going to give this one a three and a half out of five stars. Number nine, Justice League. Who's killing Superman? What's the gate full cover? Well has nothing to do really what's going on but it's a cool gate full cover anyway um, this book there wasn't much progression in the Justice League in this particular issue uh, the only thing that we got to see in this issue was you get to see a mysterious character break into the Batcave and you're not sure who it is but he has infrared technology or retina technology I'm sorry and he's able to break in uh, and steal something from the bat cave and uh, it was interesting to see that also uh, you get to see um, Wonder Woman and Superman go into this other country where Americans have not gone into millions and not millions of years hundreds of years or whatnot and they did it 
they they tried to do whatever it is that they had to do when batman tries to have a talk uh with wonder woman and superman tries to reason with them and um you know it's just batman intervening i mean that's all it was and the next thing you get to see in this particular issue as well was firestorm and adam uh are the newest uh justice league members and they were at the watchtower and they're waiting for a meeting with the other justice league members and they never showed up so they're just looking around and seeing what's happening and at the end of the issue you get this creature right here um which is Despero. i'm not too familiar with him and it looks like he's wearing the kryptonite ring so interesting stuff I don't read the Shazam story. I don't know anything about Shazam. And uh, so I can't give you any real intake about that story. But this story here was, it was good. It just wasn't anything great. Not much progression in the story itself. And I just keep finding the Justice League where it should be a great book. It's just not. It's an, a good book. Okay. So I'm going to give this one a three and a half out of five. Number eight. Green Lantern and the New Guardians. Gatefold cover of this one. What the hell is Sam and Baz doing with the White Lantern ring? This dude's just like, what, two days old and he's already, you know, wielding a white ring? Like, come on, man. We're giving this guy all this power in the world? Well, nevertheless, his wielding of the ring was very short-lived. Maybe like a, a millisecond. But when it comes to the Wrath of the First Lantern story... Uh, there's actually been progression in this story now. And I think really there has to be no choice in the whole matter because we're coming to an end. You only got the Red Lantern and you only got Green Lantern issue number 20 and that's it. Wrath of the First Lantern is over. And same with Jeff John's run on the Green Lantern. But this story has to do with Sinestro crying over that his planet blown up. And he tries to get Kyle to bring it back because he's the White Lantern. Well, it's pretty much an epic failure at this point, and at the end of the issue, you just see Sinestro fly, fly away, and he has his yellow lantern. What's he going to do? He's probably going to try to kick some uh, white lantern ass. That's what he's probably going to do. But this was a good read. Finally, really good progression in the story. I enjoyed it. The artwork kind of sucked a little bit. And, uh, but I'm going to give this one a three and a half out of five as well. Number seven, Chew. Issue number 33. That's right. Uh, this book was pretty good as well. It's part three of five of Bad Apple's story arc. And this issue had to do with Agent Two going out with the Navy. And... He has to stop these two guys right here. One guy eats all kinds of food and he gets real strong. And, um, and the other dude was his bodyguard. To make a long story short, Agent 2 definitely stops this, this agent. And he finds out that Agent 2 is looking for the person that killed his sister. And his sister, or in the, the person that kills his sister is like a vampire that eats all the powers of these Kaibo paths. And to really get a true understanding of Chu, you have to read these trades or these back issues to understand what I'm talking about. But it's a great series, throws in great comical stuff in here. There's another secret agent by the name of Poyo, and they throw him in there, to, you know, some splash pages and stuff. It's a really comical book. Um, you guys really have to read it to, to truly understand what I'm talking about, but it's a fun, fun read, um, and I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. Number 6, Savage Wolverine, issue number 4, written and drawn by, um, oh jeez, what's his name, Cho, right? <laughs> I can't believe I forgot the guy's first name, Frank Cho, Jason, yeah. Right? I don't know. Yeah, Frank Cho. I don't know why I forgot that. Anyway, Savage Wolverine is one of those books that continues to deliver. 
as long as Frank Cho is on this book and doing this particular story arc, I don't think there's going to be an issue that is bad. Um, in the last issue, we got to see Shayna, who was actually killed, and she gets resurrected by Man Thing. And it's like pretty badass. She gets into this, you know, you see her, she's dead, and then she's in this goo stuff, this goo. And then she comes out, and she's healed. She looks hot, right? Pretty cool. And it goes into this long story about how Wolverine and Shayna came up with this plan that they have to destroy this dampening field in order to escape, because no ships can escape. Well, we find out that whatever's in that's controlling this dampening field is also a cell that is holding a mysterious creature and you're like oh shit so Shayna has to run on over there and try to stop Wolverine from destroying this because he's gonna unleash this creature so the next thing you see is you see Wolverine just doing all kinds of freaking battle he's like stabbing people left and right like blah blah you know kills anybody in his path he fights some freaking gorillas here and this warrior chick is like your day is over Wolverine and he goes up and he's like yeah sure bud and he goes and he starts slicing some freaking gorilla ass, a King Kong ass. Starts stop stabbing him in the freaking eyeballs and shit. And then it's like he just chops up some fingers of the gorilla. Like you can see that right there. Like dude, what is up with that? That's crazy. This book is awesome. It's got all kinds of gore. And then he comes up to the, to the, the dampening field. And just as he's about to plant this bomb, Shayna's sweating her ass off. And she starts running on over there. She's like, oh, please don't do it, don't do it. And bam, just throws a spear at Wolverine. After a lengthy discussion, what happens is all of a sudden the Hulk comes out. Where the hell does the Hulk come from? And you're like, oh, shit. You're going to do battle with the Hulk now? I don't know. We'll see. It looks like it happens because if you look at the AR app in this actual thing, they, uh, you can see the Wolverine and Hulk staring down each other looking like they're about to fight each other uh this book is just awesome uh it, it's like not the most in-depth plot but sometimes you don't need all that to have a fun comic book great art great gore just a fun read and i'm going to give this one a four out of five Paco Mandina, by the way, is doing the art when the new uh, when the new series comes out, when the new story art comes out. I think it's on issue, I think on issue six, and Zeb Wells is the one who writes it. So we'll see if it's as good. Number five, entering the top five. Welcome, <laughs> Age of Ultron, book number six. This book was really good. It made for me, it made leaps and bounds for the past couple issues past couple issues our heroes went to antarctica to the savage land to kind of group and make some kind of plan they found nick fury in the last issue and in this particular issue now wolverine goes back in the past and nick fury's group goes into the future to try to stop wolverine in this issue you get to see uh sue storm and wolverine make a tough tough decision on what they have to do they see Nick Fury uh, from the past as well. And the only, you know, the one thing in this issue that you get to see with Nick Fury's group that goes in the future is you get to see the future of uh, Ultron, I guess. What you see, I guess, in New York in the future once Ultron completely takes over. Besides that, this group has nothing to do really with the issue. They fight a whole bunch of gold ultron heads once again you know which we've seen already but nothing you know nothing fantastic there uh this story really had to do with sue storm and wolverine's uh confrontation with hank pym and wolverine's goal is to basically stop hank pym from developing ultron and what he has to do at the end is the ultimate sacrifice to hopefully change time and we can see that storm uh sue storm is not happy with the decision but is left with no choice 
and that choice is to obviously, now spoiler, to kill Hank Pym. Really great issue, made a lot of strive in with the past two issues. I really enjoyed it. Um, I cannot wait to see what the next issue is. I I'm trying to gather it from the last story, the last uh, major event that Marvel had, and that was, you know, Avengers vs. X-Men, and what the difference is. The main difference about this story that I like better is that it comes out quicker. It comes out every week. You know how last story we had the issues drawn out for like, was it 12 issues? And it came out once a month with the tie-ins. Well, this one, it's like if you have a bad issue, it could bounce back right away the following week. And that's what I like about Age of Ultron. I mean, we're already on book six, about to go on book seven next week. And the series is almost over. And it's not long and it's not drawn out. And I think that's what I like about uh, this particular event. It may not be the best event ever, but it's not a bad event, and it's not drawn out, just like Avengers vs. X-Men, or just like Fear itself. So I kind of like this format better, and you know, we're finding out, of course, the tie-ins are not necessary. So I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed this one this week, guys. Age of Ultron, book 6. Number 4. Nova, issue number 3. That's right. In this particular issue, we get to see Sam uh, meet up with the Watcher, and he sees what's in front of him, which is an armada about to take over Earth. And Nova is like, oh shit, what do I do? Um, but this book is not about the action. It's a, it, only it's about the relationship with his what he had with his father, the relationship what he had with his mother, and the new relationships that he's developing with um, Gamora and Rocket Raccoon. Uh, you see Sam learning how to train. Uh, you know, Rocket and Gamora have no choice but to train Sam. And it's a fun read. And in this particular issue, we finally get a lots of dialogue. Where in the past couple issues, we didn't see so much dialogue. We saw a lot of visual, which is okay. Uh, but we need some story in between there as well. But by the end of the issue, we find out that Sam comes across the uh, Armada fleet. And he basically gets his ass shot. And uh, it just ends up as to be continued. Um, this book this book is really really good as well um, I said a statement earlier about Paco Mandina doing the um, doing the Savage Wolverine title I was mistaken he's actually doing this title with Zeb Wells uh, because I know I was really concerned about um, uh, uh, Jeb Loeb and Ed McGinnis actually leaving this book and uh, keeping up with the quality uh, but hopefully those guys will take it over and are paying close attention to what's going on here. Uh, but I truly love this book, and it, it was a great book. And I tell you, this made number four on the list, but there were some really good books that just like were almost dead even this week. So I'm going to give this one a four and a half out of five. Number three, Superior Spider-Man, issue number eight. In this particular issue, we get to see lots of stuff that happens here. We get to see Dr. Octopus actually be a good superior Spider-Man for once. He actually does an operation on some young child, which is really, you know, for me, I got that soft spot for the kids, especially a daughter. He does an operation on this young girl who is very thankful because he saved her life and he does the surgery um, with cardiac. And he gets this nice little um, stuffed animal, which is really cool to see. Um, you know, and he actually has emotion, uh, which is nice. I mean, that, that's what I love the most about it. And he, gives, he keeps that little stuffed animal. Uh, but in the beginning of the issue, uh, we deal with Superior, you know, dealing with the Avengers. And we find out that he's not, obviously you know they find nothing wrong with him and doc ock finds a problem with himself he finds a abnormal brain pattern but the other avengers are too dumb to figure it out so they let him go 
Carly Cooper does uh, some investigating and she tells a mysterious person probably who Superior Spider-Man could actually be. Um, just really awesome stuff. And then you also find out that Superior Spider-Man, Otto, now knows that Peter is inside his brain trying to take over. So lots of great stuff. It leaves off with a great cliffhanger. And in the next issue, you're going to see the battle between Amazing and Superior. And it looks like Superior is going to cut Peter Parker's memories or whatever from his brain. So he can't be there anymore. But fun issue. Uh, Superior now has made a progression in the series. And uh, I've enjoyed it now, I think now for the past four issues. And it's great again to see cardiac in the mix of things so i'm going to give this one a four and a half as well number two number two and number one were almost like both number ones they were great issues number two venom issue number 34 venom has come a long way since the last story arc we went from poor old flash thompson feeling sorry for himself you know just doing whatever to now fighting toxin eddie brock some alien freak like creature and you get to the point where now it's not only one alien freak like creature but now he has to fight the symbiote slayers how freaking cool is that man when i was reading this i was like no way it's, you know, and, and it's like you got Toxin doing battle against Venom and just both their symbiotes just freaking out on each other because they hate each other so much. And then you get the little weird like creature that he comes in out of nowhere. The guy that's always hungry all the time and Toxin just like, I'm going to kick your ass. And he sits there and freaking right through his freaking skull or whatever it is. And then he eats his head right off. I mean, he just takes a big chomp right there. My God, this book was just fantastic. In the end of this book, the Venom symbiote takes the toxin, uh, the, or the antidote or whatever, that kind of calms Venom down and just sits there and stabs toxin and it kind of controls that symbiote. So they both went their ways. And like I said, at the end of this issue, you don't know what happened to that bionicle whatever it is and it kind of just it just kind of went into some other bum off the street and then it just says that it's relaxing and it has to spawn and it has to spread and you see it go into other creatures or other human hosts and then it starts to spread and like i said you get the symbiote slayers man this book was so freaking oh really good guys i suggest you pick it up now this is a great story to start reading venom um i know you can get what issue 33 and 32 i'm sure you can find it on the stands but if you want venom if you want eddie brock you want toxin you want some new symbiote slayers pick up this book right here five out of five number one number one number one 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 daredevil man without fear Woo! Mark Wade, fantastic ass book. Woo! Let me just tell you, this book was on the money. When I actually looked at this, I was like, this looks okay. I, I had no idea, no expectation whatsoever. Actually, even this book, like, the book's concept is like almost the same. Look, the covers are similar, you know, similar colors and they almost look the same and the action inside both books are just as equal it, it was just a ridiculously awesome book um just so well written the action was so so placed in so many ways it's so great to see um you know when you see daredevil senses uh go into work it's just a treat visually to see how the character smells and feels and hair and hears and the issue opens up as matt murdoch um just checking on foggy you know at foggy side or whatnot 
and this was this trap this kid you know said he was you know experimented on and had the same problems just like Matt Murdock and so he takes the kid and the kid tells him where to go and it finds out that it's a trap he has a pacemaker in him and the kid is just dead and you're like oh shit the kid's dead you know and you're like fuck and then all of a sudden as this comes along it's set up for him to go into this abandoned warehouse this open warehouse and you see the mystery character right here and you're like who's this mystery character he's wearing his dad's uh, uniform and outfit and all kinds of stuff like that uh, from I guess when he was a boxer and then the next thing you see is you find out and the guy's like my name is Akari and you're like what is this guy and he looks like this and you're like damn straight that guy is sweet and you're like he looks just like him but he's an exact duplicate of Daredevil and you're like no way and they fight each other toe for toe and just when you think that you know daredevil might get the advantage he always fails and he, he gets his long staff and you know he starts to outmaneuver him and daredevil is real cocky but he starts beating the shit out of him and you know it flashes back to you know the the glory days when he's with stick or whatnot training and he tries to remember his training and it just does not help daredevil you know gets desperate and he goes into a place and he tries to use his senses against uh, the other guy, Akari, which is his name is Fury, right? And uh, he tries to use his senses against him, gets water going, goes into place with many objects because he feels that this character hasn't been doing this as long as he has. And the next thing you see is that you find out that we don't think the guy is actually really blind. He kicks the shit out of freaking Daredevil and he gives him a threat. He sits there and he goes, you can go any place at any time and your life is going to die. You're going to be you're pathetic. You're nothing. You're a loser. And he lets freaking Daredevil go and now Matt Murdock is scared for his life. Dude, phenomenal issue. Like I said, just as much action as in Venom, but there was just something here that might have been just a little bit better. Mark Wade is just so good at this particular book. It just he hits the character on the nose. And I just loved it. So this was my number one pick of the week, everybody. So you saw it, you witnessed it, you lived it, and hopefully you enjoyed it. This was the comic book countdown of the week. And guys, as always, thank you for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. And this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. And thanks for watching, everyone. I'll take care. See you real soon. And I hope you enjoyed the new hat.